Today's video is sponsored by Aura. There are at least two kinds of silence that define us. One is the eloquent silence of the world as we were given it, the silence of light and beauty, the silence that holds a promise. There is also sometimes a dark silence within us, one that results from willful blindness and deafness. We struggle against it. What will America be? How's it, how's it? Robert Adams, landscape photographer, is one of my favorite photographers, not just in landscape, but any genre. I remember the first time that I saw one of his images. It was captivating in a way that very few first encounters with the photographer is. It was this silhouette of a lady outlined against a blank window in a nondescript house. So simple, yet so evocative. I had to find out more about this photographer. I was just obsessed with him. And I discovered that, you know, he was part of a, of a group called the New Topographics, who were a, you know, a, a selection of landscape photographers in the sort of the late 50s, 60s, 70s, around that sort of middle of the century sort of period, who were thinking about man's effect on the, on the landscape. And the New Topographics is very interesting, but it also is one of those areas in photography where we can get a little bit academic, you know, drifting away from what really is, certainly for me, the motivating thing with photographs is, is, is how they make you feel. It's fine that they have a purpose, but surely if they don't make you feel anything, then they kind of miss their purpose. So rather than dwelling upon you know, the new topographics and, and their, their impact upon photography and, and modern consciousness and all that kind of stuff. I just want to concentrate on the title of this wonderful book that I got recently oh, called American Silence, which is cutting straight through to what I find so intriguing about Robert Adams's photography, which is this feeling of silence. The quietness about them. The fact that, yes, they do have a lot to say, but they say it so softly. I was really excited when this book arrived in the post, because first of all, it's, it's a lovely book. I mean, it's printed beautifully. It's got a, it's, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy. It's got some wonderful photographs in here that I hadn't seen before. And as I was flicking through it, it dawned on me that this wasn't simply just a retrospective, but it is a catalogue for an exhibition. And I was, oh, this is kind of interesting. And then it dawned on me that this exhibition would be showing when I was in DC at the National Gallery of Art. I was like, oh, this is so awesome. We must go to see this immediately, if not forthwith. So that's how I came to be in DC on like the 7th of July or something like that on a Sunday afternoon and walking through this wonderful exhibition of, of Robert Adams's photographs. They, they covered his entire career, obviously would they, because it's a retrospective. They were so once again quiet. I think this is always the thing that you kind of we tend to miss when we're looking at photographs especially on on screen is the size that the artist wants them reproduced at there are some photographers who reproduce their images in in huge scale so they are overbearing and and you're really dominant but what i found intriguing about robert adams's prints were that they were modest in size. That they were not in your face, brash things, but more almost like a set of mini statements in, well, if there'd have been any smaller, they would have been like in postcard size, you know, but these were, you know, eight, you know, eight by tens, that, that sort of thing. 
And, and I found them all the more powerful for this modesty. As I was walking around the exhibition with a friend of mine who had gone to visit, uh, you know, I was trying to explain to her about the new topographics and all this kind of stuff and, you know, and, and why these photographs are actually really good. And that's always a tricky thing, isn't it? You sort of say, well, here's some photographs of what are actually fairly nondescript environments. You know, tract housing being built in, in, you know, in the desert and, and signs just, you know, randomly <laughs> placed in places. There's nothing that you look at it from a techni technical standpoint and go, wow, that's an amazing trick they've done with the, with the photography there or, you know, or that the scenes themselves are crazy, you know, major events, much, you know, like the, the Pulitzer Prize gallery that I'd seen a couple of years previously in, in, in DC as well. These are just photographs that, well, they're silent. They're silent observations of a country, a time, a place, a, you know, a, a, a state of environment that was in flux, was changing. While this development must have been noisy, that it brought all this stuff to, they are photographed then in this quietness that often they are kind of devoid of people, but man's mark is always in these images. I love that idea of just letting the landscape speak to you. Because I was in the US and various boring reasons about, you know, cell phone companies and things like that, I was having to use public Wi-Fi an awful lot when I was there, you know, to check my emails and what have you. And I could see the horror that my friend was looking at me when I was happy-go-lucky, you know, connecting to all these unsecured networks because identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in America. Apparently it's so rife that there is a new victim every 14 seconds. I mean, think about that, it's crazy. And that is why I'm very happy to be partnered with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is identity theft protection. It's fraud monitoring. It's, it's a VPN and password management system, plus antivirus, all in one easy to use app. Now you might have one or two of these tools already, but if you don't have all of them, then it's like leaving your back door open when you've triple bolted the front door. No doubt you know somebody who has had their identity stolen and have been shocked about how easily this can actually happen. Using Aura's VPN, you can make sure that all of your personal information is safe and encrypted. Protect yourself and your family from identity theft by clicking on this link on screen. And it's also in the description box below. When you click on that link, you will get a two week free trial to Aura. And then you can see for yourself just how many times in the past your information has been compromised. My favorite period of Robert Adams's photography is, is from the New West. These images in Colorado and you know, Denver when, when things were being built up, all this tract housing was, was rising from, you know, from the, this, I don't want to say barren earth, but it certainly looks barren in, in these, these photographs. And they remind me somewhat of, of my own childhood. And I think this is what photographs can do so well, is that they can be gateways to a place that you enjoy, that remind you of some event in your past. And I look at these images of families starting their new lives in these places, and, and then contrast that against those self-same places today because in a lot of the photographs from this period you can see street signs so you can go on to to google maps and go on street view and there it is how different does the world look 
now compared to those images then. And perhaps this is now the, 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 the power of these photographs is that we are reminded that what actually looks like it has always been thus, this, this built up suburban, you know, commercialized landscape didn't always look like this. And I did say that we wouldn't drift into the world of the new topographics and all that kind of stuff, but it's almost impossible to not feel that power, that, that echo of an old advert that I remember seeing, that the words have stuck with me, where it says, strong words, softly spoken. These images of Robert Adams and everything else that was contained in this exhibition of American silence were just a joy to, to behold. It was wonderful to see these images in, in person, to feel their quiet power. And I've mentioned that a lot today because his work is beautifully quiet. Like a lot of photographers, Robert Adams has some standout images that I think even, you know, somebody with either the most passing interest in photography could look at that and go, yeah, I, I think that looks, it looks nice, for, for want of a better word. But he also falls into this category that I think a lot of, let's, let's loosen call, loosely call them arty photographers, falls into, which is you show a photograph that by itself, is well it's, it's it's fairly nondescript it's not great and you know uh, you know when you're talking to a, a friend like i was at this exhibition it's it's hard to point at an image and go dad this is so good because it looks like something everybody else could do robert adams creates some wonderful standalone photographs but the real power of his images comes from the body of work that he has created over his whole career. And this is why when you talk to somebody and you show them what can be a fairly nondescript photograph from something, like I was, you know, with, with my friend at the, uh, the exhibition, trying to explain why wow, this is so cool and, and you know, why Robert Adams is great. If you look at that image, it's kind of like, well, it doesn't really, what is it? It's just, a, it's a picture of a, of a tree trunk on a beach or some random thing. And you have to think about those images in conjunction with all the other photographs that Robert Adams, William Eggleston, Stephen Shaw, all of these photographs come together as a body of work. That's what we lack so much. That's why going to exhibitions is so important, to see photographs not just printed at the size that the, the, the artist intended, but in the way that they intended to work together as a body of photographs, not just individual photographs put haphazardly on the screen. Go and see exhibitions. The, the, go and drink in photographs, in the flesh, to see the prints, to see the almost tangible fingerprints of the photographer in that image. A photographer who I would love to go and see their work in person is Desiree Dolren. I know that you are gonna love her photographs because they are also quite quiet. Click on the video on screen right now and enjoy her sumptuous images. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.